tricks on Zoom, so now I know how to stop people's camera stuff. Um, what are you doing right now? The Zoom dance, the one um on the song. Zoom you remember dance. what? Our boom. Do you remember that? Song? Everybody's oh, like. Zoom. Hmm. Okay, all right. I, I didn't know it was called the Zoom dance though. I never oh, I don't know. Or maybe it's called the biker. I don't know. Um, yeah. I just thought it was the young jock. I don't know. Oh, the young jock. <laughs> I can't. I can't deal with you, man. Uh, I'm weak. I'm. I'm dead, man. What? <laughs> I don't even know what episode. Is it ninety three or ninety four? It's not. No, it's ninety four because we did ninety three last week. So yeah, it's ninety four. <laughs> Uh, we, we back for another installment. Uh, I'm unbothered, Mike, and I'm with uh, what are we gonna call you this week? Ooh, uh, hmm, that's a good question. Mm -mm, Nechiko Kurosaki. I'm going bleach this week. I don't know. Oh, Nechiko, we haven't did that one before. Wait, have okay, you go before you have not. Oh, no, see. cement that, cement that in stone right there. Um, Nechigo Kurosaki. Yeah, take take Nadira off and put Nechigo. Um, I'm about to do that now. Why does he have that toy, man? Pub. I'm dead. I hate that he has that toy. I'm so sorry. This Cardi is only stuff. show out when we about to record. Right, and then he just looked at me like, hmm? What, what did I do? He's had a traumatic week. Let him live. He did have a traumatic week. Oh my gosh. I uh oh, I don't even want to talk about it because I really was like scared that that dog was gonna die. And I was like, not nah, gonna be okay. I'm trying to think have either one of these dogs ever gave me a scare. I don't think so. Well, actually no. I'm Rain got bit one time in the dog park and that was scary because that was when he was like real like little. Bit by some like somebody else's dog bit him? Yes. Oh, no, 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 no. See. All right. So quick story, quick story. Um, then we'll start this, start the show officially. Um, so one day we were, we were down there. So this is, so this is back when rain was like mad little. So Jennifer was still in Houston. I was here and rain was in that little phase where he was getting bigger and he would do little bad shit. So, mm -hmm. so he would do little bad shit. So Jennifer was like, I need you to take care of him. I need you to come get him. So I had to, I went to Houston, got him, brought him back. So I'm taking care of him full time. And one day, so we, so I always, whenever it was just me and Donnie, we would go down to this dog park and there was this one little wiener dog that, no, it wasn't a wiener. He looked like Wishbone. He looked like Wishbone. Oh, what's the, the story? Wishbone. <laughs> yes, that Wishbone. <laughs> if, if, you, if you don't know who Wishbone is, you're too young for this podcast. Too young. Turn off yeah. right now. Um, we're old. Anyway, <laughs> so he looked like Wishbone, but he was mad aggressive. Mad, mad aggressive. So anytime mm -hmm. like me and Donnie would go to the dog park, he would, real, he would really like growl and snarl at Donnie. He wouldn't attack him, but he would growl and snarl at him or whatever. Donnie, much bigger than him, so he would just like kind of ignore him and keep it pushing. So one day, me, Donnie, and Rain are down there, and uh, what was the? Oh, I remember the dog's name. Thank God. So the dog and his owner comes in. The dog's name was Seymour. It's the ugliest name for a dog I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Who names the dog Seymour? So, Seymour. Any, yeah, Seymour. Stupid dog. Anyway, so <laughs> Seymour and his owner pulls up. Opens the door. Rain is sitting over there, like in my lap. Uh, no, no. And Rain's sitting there, like by my feet. I'm on on a little bench. You know how my dog work is. So I'm, I'm sitting yeah. on the bench. So Seymour like sprints in, runs directly for Rain, and like bites him. Just like straight up, like smoke. Black forces smoke straight to Rain and, and went for like biting him. Rain's a little pup. Rain's probably. Four, Car four, Cartier size. No, he's he's bigger than mm, yeah, he's a little bit bigger than Cartier at that time. He's probably four or five mm -hmm. months. So that's when he had started growing and getting into this little weird long leg phase. But <laughs> just just Seymour runs straight and and and, and bites him. And, and I'm like, yo, I'm I'm yelling, I'm trying to separate him and stuff. I'm like, get your dog. This owner like moseying on over there and stuff. I'm like, bro, come on, get your dog. And I and I and if I wasn't a dog person, I would have punted Seymour to the next apartment building. But I didn't. And his owner came and got him and he tried to apologize and I, I was just so pissed off and I, and and I had I had just had to walk out. We just left. And um I never saw Seymour again that day because his owner would know it's on site if I saw his ass again. Cause I was like, bro, 
your dog just attacked my dog for no reason. Like, see, that's 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 I would go to jail. Period. I would go to jail. Like, if you would, know your dog is crazy, why would you bring? You don't have him at the dog, dog park. You don't, you don't need to have him out there. I, even if your dog is, you know, ten pounds, but he crazy, don't bring him around other dogs. Like dogs, if he's not friendly, like. So don't do it. I took Rain upstairs. He wasn't bleeding or nothing. He oh, that's he, good. He was scared, but he wasn't bleeding or nothing. <sighs> but yeah, so Rain survived. Uh, Seymour is MIA, thank God. And um, <laughs> yeah, I think that was the only scary moment I've had between my two dogs. Donnie really be chilling, so he don't really get into nothing bad. So yeah. Um, but anyway, that's my quick dog. So I have a lot of bad dog stories on this podcast. Remember Buttercup? You do a Buttercup. That's a, yeah. Anyway, that's I don't even want to talk about Buttercup. That make me mad all over again. Um, <clears throat> so this is episode ninety four of the Blender Made Podcast. Um, Again, I'm Unbothered Mike, and that's Nechigo Kurosaki, and um, we're we're here for another week. We're coming up on 100. It's, it's, it's still a Super we close. Got six episodes after this? Six episodes. Mm. Hey, and actually, Nate, I don't even think you knew this, but we, we might actually drop two episodes next week, so. Uh, okay, cool. What's yeah. me? Nah, but you ain't going to be on this another one, but I'm just saying we're going to have another one. On the books. Okay. Yeah this this yeah. is gonna be this is gonna be that one piece pod I've been been, been talking. Oh, about. have fun! Have fun! <laughs> I don't want no parts have of that. Fun. Have I wouldn't fun. I wouldn't even make you show up for a one piece pod, Nate. That's how I already. That's why I can't <laughs> even say nothing about it. So, um, have fun. Yeah, that's that's gonna be fun. Uh, but um, <laughs> yeah, guys. Uh, I hope y'all have had a good week. Um. Uh, 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 I did not get that much anime in this week, but I'll talk about that later. Uh, I think Nate probably is the same boat as me. Um, shout out to the Patreon listeners, everybody that's supporting us and everything. Um, and yeah, I think we're yeah, I think we're good to go on everything like that. So this week we actually have um a very very special guest with us. Um, so we were uh. If I can get my thing to work right, um, we were contacted by um, uh, Mr. Mari, and uh, Mari asked us. You know, he said, "Hey, I have Miss Zoe here, and Zoe is writing her own graphic novel called Primary Deviants. We listen to y'all. We need y'all to talk to her about her special graphic novel." And so we said, of course, we will talk to Zoe. And Zoe is here with us um, to talk about anime and primary deviants and, and everything in between. Uh, everything. Let me see. Zoe, can we hear you right now? I don't know. Oh, can you? There you go. There you yes, go. Yes, we can. I had to make sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm excited. So, yeah. Hi. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm tripping. So, uh, so uh, let me see here. Uh Gunshots and a round of applause for Zoe. Oh, oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There we go. All right. Super uh, excited. Yeah, uh, so Zoe, how are you doing this week, dear? We so nice to meet you and everything. So uh yes. how are you how are you how are you how are you, how are you doing? Well, I'm doing really great. Honestly, the highlight of my week was finding out about this interview. I was extremely excited because I knew that I would be able to see you guys. And it's just, it's just a really wonderful experience. I can't express how happy I am to be able to sit here and talk to you guys about something that I've been working on my whole life. So it's just really wonderful. And I'm very excited. I'm very happy. And this is a great end to my week for sure. No, we're really excited. We're we excited. You. Yeah. Yeah. I really, this is Rena. How did y'all, how did y'all come across our podcast? If, if, if I may ask, I, I, I was curious on that. Um, well, my PR individual, Maury, who you've contacted, okay, he's okay. listening to you a lot, and I've listened to you guys. Um, and I've deeply looked into you guys this week because I was like, okay, maybe I need to find out a little bit more <laughs> just Girl, in case. Ahead. And even the, the more I found out about you all, the more I felt comfortable being interviewed with you. Uh, Honestly, it feels like I'm just talking to some of my crew. You know, it's really this nice. This is literally what this is. Yeah. This is yeah, crew talk. I love it. Definitely. We are so excited to have you. Um, when we got 
the media kit and everything and we were looking at everything i told him i was like so um when are we gonna have her on because i was like i'm i was like yeah we got to have this like asap like asap thank you so much. i love no no problem Q looks amazing yes by the way A so beautiful that's my team entirely i may have created the story in the series but without my team yeah i wouldn't have anything to look at <laughs> so they that media kit, shout out to like, top d goodness. yes top oh, d yeah. in the building <laughs> Good job. Of course. Yeah, thank you. Yes, yes. Uh, and, and we'll get into the. I, I know the audience is confused. We'll get into what Top D is later on. So we'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we know, we know, we here. Um, <laughs> we good, we good. Yeah. Oh man! All right. So yeah, Zoe's with us this week, man. We're gonna talk about her book and some some other stuff. So um, let's start off with the usual stuff. So um, who wants to go current watches first? We can let our guests go first. Okay, so yeah, you yeah, definitely so you, on first. Spot. you gotta go first. Okay. Well, I definitely am not watching Seven Deadly Sins. <laughs> <laughs> May I talked to her about Seven Deadly Sins, and I told her I was like, "Look, just go in with the lowest expectations for animation, and you'll be okay." Yeah. Mm -hmm. So recently, mm -hmm. I've been trying to um, get back with One Piece. To be honest, <laughs> I'm really sorry about that. Just because I fell off, you know, it, it's got some of its shortcomings after Ocean Seven. Uh, but other than that, I've been focusing on rewatching what's been inspiring my series so that I wouldn't lose that passion, such as uh, I rewatched Fruits Basket. Okay. It's got some, a new animated series for it. It's new mm -hmm. art and everything. It's really incredible. I'm very much enjoying it, and I can't wait for the English dub to come out. Um, and from Fruits Basket, I learned a lot of uh, friendship and being able to talk about trauma and, and a dark past. And that inspires me to make sure that my characters throughout the series uh, faces their past and their trauma. So just rewatching something like Fruits Basket is what I've been doing lately. Fruits Basket is a really good one. That's one of Kasha's favorites, yeah. but I, I definitely have watched it. Tara Honda, oh my goodness. Oh, her store at the beginning. I was like, oh, I just want to be her. She's so sweet. And she I was like, can I be sweet like that? She is such a beautiful spirit. Oh my goodness. She is the nicest person ever. Oh, I that oh. first episode made me cry. But, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Fruits Basket is a really good one. That's oh, that's really awesome that you get like your inspiration from that show. That's a really good show, Mikey. All right, so I really, uh, I really didn't watch <laughs> much at all this week. I can't remember last week. Nate, did I last week? Did I talk about me finishing Burn the Witch? I don't you know think. No, oh, I think you said you were going to finish okay. it. So I did. Okay, so I did at that point. Okay, perfect. I didn't think I finished it last week when we recorded but okay yeah i did so i did finish burn the witch um was very 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 happy about burn the witch um i want more and come on kubo kubo playing around like don't just drop three a three episode <laughs> anime on me and then expect me not to want more like <laughs> oh, i hate that <sighs> man yeah it, it was really good now you should really watch burn the witch though because it's real quick and the story is mad good. And I'm like, bro, where's the rest of this at? Like, where? That's how they get you. Hmm? That's how they get you. I might get my fans that way, too. I don't know. No, it don't works. do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Don't the, do that. Streets, What's the Shannon Sharp? Do the streets need the whole thing. Like, we don't want no, no three pack. All right, all right. You be stressing when you don't have the whole thing, you like, needing it. No, it's so, painful. You got to wait. <laughs> wait. Wait. Yeah. And then the ink stuff. Yeah. Um, that, yeah. Yeah, I, I finished Burn the Witch and um I was really, really happy. Um at first, like it didn't catch me at first, but then towards the end of that second episode and then definitely on the third episode, I was like, yo, this could be really good if y'all kept this going. Like, um mm -hmm. Burn the Witch, like I said, it's, it's it's in the world of bleach, it's in the Soul Society, and it's in an area called Reverse London, and they have dragons that um are like the main focus of the story like the dragons are like evil and they're the witches that are dispatched to control the dragons and make sure they don't start messing stuff up so um it's one girl's dragon that she had a little baby dragon it turns out that this dragon was actually like one of the legendary dragons which are all named after fairy tales so she had the cinderella dragon and 
man, that thing was it was super powerful, and then it, I can't I, watch Burning <laughs> Witch. That's all I'll say. I, I ain't gonna go too far on about all it. Right. Yeah, watch Burning we'll Witch. Do. Um, and I did like right before we got on Zoom. I I watched and I didn't quite finish it. Jujutsu Kaisen, which looks like it's gonna be I another another episode. Uh, strong episode. Yes, um, three episodes in there. They've hit on each each and every one so far. So, um, Jujutsu Kaisen is officially like my f- favorite of the year so far. Three episodes in. So, um, we got. Two more months to see if that lasts. So yes. Um, yes. Yeah, so that's it for me. Nay, what about you? Um, so anime wise, this week, um, I just uh continue to watch Reborn. Um so where I'm at now, re- I really like how I guess you would consider it a tournament arc, but um basically I as I was saying last week where I got to uh Suna and hit in the family, got the Vongola rings and turns to find out another set of the rings have like two parts to them and you have to get both parts to make it a whole so another possible successor to the vongola family got the other half of them so they had to battle it out so each person that had one half of the ring had to battle it out with the other person to get the other ring and i really like um, it went through like the training of each of Suna's uh, family members. Um, it went through Suna's character growth, and like Suna is a is a dog. Like I really, really like him. I really like where the story is going. I'm really sold on Reborn, so um, definitely gonna keep watching it for everybody who has watched. It. I love Reborn himself. Reborn is just so blunt. He is a very good sensei. Like I really, even though he's a baby. But he is like really. So have you seen Reborn? I have not gotten to the episode that you were describing, but I might as well skip to it. Did you? See, oh my goodness! I've watched like, the, it's a lot of episodes. Yes, it is. It is, and it, it does start off slow. But I will say, looking back at it now, those first, like that first season, like the first twenty episodes or so, it really does set the foundation yeah. for like those characters, who they are, to Suna. And just watching them all grow, like it's it's really well written. So I'm definitely sold on it. I'm gonna keep preaching on the reborn bandwagon. So y'all watch it. Okay. That's the only anime stuff I watched this week. Outside of that, y'all know it's spooky season. So I definitely watched this late, latest season of Lovecraft Country. I forgot to say I, I watched it, but I did watch the latest episode of that. Um, and I just I don't that that episode stressed me out. I actually didn't even watch it. At one time, like when they went back in the past, I was like, you know what? My stress level's up. This is giving me anxiety. I'm going to have to watch this another time because they were in Tulsa Massacre. I was like, oh, I can't take it. Oh, I can't take it. So I did end up, you know, finishing the episode. Um, Now I watched, um, I finished The Haunting of Bly Manor. Um, One of them. I watched uh, The uh, House of a Thousand Corpses because I love Rob Zombie. So I'll probably watch more Rob Zombie movies before the month is up. And there was one more um, weird thing. I was telling you guys earlier, I think it was on the lake or something, some Russian Netflix original that I started. It's like a post-apocalyptic kind of deal with, you know, virus that's going and killing everybody. So we'll see how that goes. But you guys know spooky season. If you guys have anything weird that you want me to watch, please let me know. It doesn't have to be anime. What is it? So non-anime show. Um... Nay, there's a show on Netflix called Evil. And when I tell you... That's what I started with Luke Cage. Started? I don't know his real name. But yes, because like that demon, oh my goodness, the demon no. George was messing with her. And I was like, baby, <laughs> you think this fake? And then that dude was like, George is going to come. I was like, mm. Nay, I binged that in like three days. I was like, yo, where's season two at? Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, I was, so it's that good. I was I watched the first episode and I was like, this is pretty solid. I just you know, randomly saw whole, it and I was like, yo, this is gonna good. See, I didn't know if it was like a satire kind of thing or if it was like legit gonna be about like exorcisms and, and stuff like that. I like the part I like that they have like the skeptic and then the person that believes because usually the skeptic ends up believing eventually because they get enough, you know. So I I did watch that first episode. She's like, I'm just doing this to uh, pay off student loan. Then I'm like, okay, girl, well, you opening up a can of worms now. Let's see. So I, okay. I did start. I, I knew it was something else. I I started this week 
That was it. I did start evil. So I'm on like episode two on that. Two you, or three. You actually. you'll really like that show, I think. Um that yeah, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spoil that one for you, but I think okay. you'll really like that one. Um I was like, this will probably they will probably really like this show because I this is I love this. You don't yeah, know that, if, that, that, Yeah, I'll put I'll put it like this. You you'll never know like if it's actually like some some horror stuff going on, or if it's not horror, like you, they they do it they do it such a good well of of, do, of, of making you kind of wonder like what's real and what's not real. Do you know what? There's an anime we um I want to say Kasha put me on it last year and we watched it together. It was called Vatican Exam. I remember y'all talking about that. And it's very similar. Like it was two priests. One well, one was like they were both priests, but one believed more in like the spiritual part of everything the other one was more like logic science science kind of could prove um everything and the, when the vatican sent them out to actually go view these whether if they needed an exorcism or if these things that were happening were really like evil or if it was like some type of logical explanation to it very similar it's called Vatican, Vatican Miracle and Miracle Examiner. Miracle Examiner. That was actually a good. It actually didn't score that good on um, my Annie list, but it was it was a decent watch if you're into like stuff like that, like the Da Vinci Code and oh, like yeah. The, yeah. So if you're into stuff like that and like the, the Vatican Church and you know the Holy Grail and stuff like that, I think that's a good show and it's probably good right now. You know, with us being in spooky season mm -hmm. to watch too. It's got some of the, like evil, so. Y'all watch that anime. That'll probably be my recommendation this week since we're in spooky season. But I'm definitely gonna finish Evil. Thank you. I was trying to. I was like, let me. I was like, let me watch this because it's Luke Cage, and I didn't know how his character. I, I I like how he's playing his character, but when I seen it, I was literally like, what's Luke Cage doing? I he 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 does a good job in the show. I, I would like that. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah. he did that first episode. I was I was pretty so when that demon. Oh my goodness, George! I was like, I don't even like that name anymore. He was messing with that lady, oh. cutting her finger. I was like, this is ooh ooh. I was like, let me before yeah. I go to bed. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about George even. Messing. We'll talk about even next week. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So let's let's talk about let's move from transition from evil on to the good. Right. Zoe's here. Um, <laughs> yes. So actually. Evil is a good analogy from from what I from my understanding of uh, primary deviance. So yes, so yeah, Valencia and and Audrey, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I I really I have a lot of questions about this this story, but we're gonna get to it. So yes, yes. <laughs> so um, Zoe, please um let everybody know who you are and uh what you are creating and um yeah, just just tell everybody about yourself. All right, cool. Uh, like you said, my name is Zoe, Zoe Simeon. I am the author of Primary Deviance. And I love that you guys do mention that it is a graphic novel, but I want you to keep in mind that it's going to be a triple threat of an animated series as well and a written novel. So it's going to be the written word, the graphic, and the animated series. That's our actual That's goal cool. for the future. And I'm a Creole Muslim woman. So representing minorities and women in my series is very important to me. And my series is not only that triple thread of a written and a graphic and the animated series, but it's got a, a whole lot of different levels that makes it unique. Mainly being the primary characters are people of color and the two main characters are also women. So I'm very excited to finally get it out there after working on it for so many years, especially with my team working so hard. So I'm very excited for that. Okay, okay, okay. And your team, which is known as Top D, can you Top tell D, what Top D, D means? Top D. So it's a capital T, lowercase O P, capital D. So Top D, we came up with that because of the series. The series name is the Primary Deviant Series. And we are the original Primary Deviant team. So Top D team. Yeah, and it's because of them that we have the Kickstarter up and running. It's because of them that you guys were able to get the media kit. Um, and it's because of them that I'm able to sit down with you today. And I'm so honored for that, by the way. Thanks again for having me. 
Girl, don't don't feel. I was gonna say, don't poop in our homes. Don't toot our horns, girl. Like we. <laughs> nah, I got it too. <laughs> it's really awesome. I love being here, and I'm very happy to talk about primary deviance. So, ask anything that you want to ask. I'm not gonna reveal everything, obviously, course, but we want to, you know, give you guys some insight on what my goals are and my hopes are. Now you want to you want to jump this bad boy off. Now I gotta figure out how I can work these questions so I can get the answer. Right, well, let, me, let me go first. Oh. <laughs> Without giving too, giving too much away. Be careful. Go All right, so I, I, I peeped. Um, I peeped a little bit of the character descriptions and everything, and I, and mm -hmm. I, I kind of started seeing a little bit of a, a of a pattern here. So tell me if I'm kind of on the right track. So did you, when you were creating Primary Deviance, did you um, incorporate your faith as a Muslim woman into the story? Um, that you did, primarily what you believe, you know, your faith as uh, as a Muslim woman into the story, and, and kind of animated that, I guess, for lack of a better wording. <laughs> It's okay, you dig it. So, no, actually. Mm. The part, I do want to state clearly that I hope to be a good representation of what a Muslim mm -hmm. really is, and that's being kind and considerate and open-minded okay. and respectful. So me as an individual, as the author of this series, I do my very best to make this series as diverse and um, as fighting for equality as possible. And I stand for the fact that I am a Muslim woman, and I want to be able to represent this is my faith as as a Muslim. Equality uh, is very important, no matter your race, no matter your religion, mental health, no matter your class, regardless of who you are, what you are, everyone deserves to be respected and accepted. And that is something that I put into my series. So I'm representing that aspect of myself as the creator of this series. OK, OK. That's so That's big. <laughs> This is not about the series, but this was something I kind of wanted to state when I read your a uh, little bit of your bio and I thought about it. I was like, oh, I should say this. I got my undergrad in uh, criminal justice, too, with an uh, emphasis on forensic science. So <laughs> I just thought I'd say that because I was like, I forgot that I, when I read that, I was like, oh, my gosh, you don't meet. <laughs> a lot of CJ majors these yeah. days. So. <laughs> That's awesome. That's wonderful. I actually try my best to incorporate what I've learned, obviously, throughout my whole life. But from criminal justice and forensics, as well as anthropology, um, you can learn a variety of things if you mm -hmm. learn how to look at things with different perspectives. That's so my law enforcement... <laughs> Uh, knowledge and know-how and all that is put into my series. If you look closely, you'll be someone like you. You'll be able to spy it for sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited for your for your. Uh, I'm just waiting for you to drop. First of all, the artwork looks amazing. It does beautiful. The characters are absolutely like they're absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm assuming someone from um, on the top D crew is the illustrator is that something you can give so, away now so right now uh yes she is oh, our, our artist bad, bad see my vision in a way i never imagined in a way i never imagined i knew what my characters looked like but i didn't know what my characters looked, looked like, like until i saw them i would say no i want this i want that i want this and she was like so you mean this and you mean that Working with my artist was uh, like working with myself and it was a beautiful time. It was, I'm so happy that you commented on it because that shows me that what we put into it has reached someone. And that, that makes me so happy. And wor wor words can't even express how happy that makes me. I appreciate that. And I love Audrey, the way she looks. Audrey is cool. Beautiful, cool lips, dark skin, great hair. Good I love hair. her. Uh, she is Gorgeous. Valencia is too. I'm not gonna lie, I mean, I know she's a little equal. I'm like, virgin. <laughs> and I, man, I love that concept as well. Like, would um, you mind actually telling me what you think of the concept? Like, I want you to tell me what you. <laughs> so, like, when we, um, when I watched the video and just um, listening to a lot of the members from Top D, kind of like you know talking about you and then talking about like what they like what your concept was and what you wanted out of it and just knowing that Valencia is supposed to be like the person that 
she is that she has to like that she's gonna show the I was like girl I, was like, I can't read to read this because that's I was like I actually need that for myself because even though I'm almost 30 like sometimes it is hard to be a hundred percent yourself to the world because like the time you know the climate we're in and the times we're in sometimes you know you just don't know what you'll get out of people so sometimes it's kind of hard to just be like if I'm my authentic true self how is that going to come how's that going to come across to others like and you try i know you're not supposed to necessarily care but you do like i mean as much as you don't want to admit it at in some aspect of like you you care what people think about you so sometimes it's hard and so listening to that i was like man i got it this because i was like valencia is, is like it just looks like she's like fear she's just like this is me take it or leave it like yeah, cry <laughs> so i was like and then seeing like the difference in the character like i said they're absolutely gorgeous like when i went through and like looked at each character i was like they look so good but like audrey and valencia like of course they stuck out to me especially being a black woman i was like they look so good her hair is like mine like she looks like me and even at 30 years old you still like look at certain things you're like oh my gosh that oh look i'm represented on something like it still makes you feel good so yes like nay i want you to know i appreciate your words from the bottom of my heart that i really do because that's exactly what i want to accomplish i don't care how old i don't care if the individual is 99 years old and, and doesn't even know what anime is if they can look at that and say oh my god that that's how i'm feeling that's what i'm struggling with and that looks just like me then that's exactly what i want to accomplish and you hit the nail on the head with the contrast between audrey and valencia it is her truest self it's her raw form it's her rage her love her passion her fear um whatever solid emotion that she is feeling it's amplified through valencia and you see it all in her um so you hit that very well you were on point and i'm so excited for you to learn more about their um their interactions with each other and and audrey's growth into who she really is because no matter how confident you are on the outside you do have self-doubt and audrey feels self-doubt she she's she fears herself sometimes because of how she's actually feeling um and that's part of why valencia exists so that's wonderful to hear from you. Thank you. Uh, no, no, thank you for creating such a beautiful, like I can, this story is going to be, I'm excited for the story. So just for the record, especially the graphic part, because sometimes I'm going to be a little lazy when it comes to reading. So <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. That's <laughs> not like, 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 different forms. And I'm t I, I will definitely read it, but like me being a lazy adult, it's not always the first thing I, I go for, so... You'll be able to watch the anime someday, too. That is good. It's true. <laughs> the streets need that. They do. Do, especially the, the care. When I tell you, they look so good. And Enigma, too. I was like, Enigma is so <laughs> pretty. I'm like, oh, my gosh. These women are, like, beautiful. Like the the guys look good too, you know. But um, <laughs> they're you know. handsome, they're cute, right? They're cute. I'm like, yeah, you guys are okay, you know. So, but like, just seeing the women, like, oh, uh, and then the name and can you tell me what made you name her Enigma? I mean, I I kind of have an idea of why you did, but just so the listeners can know why you named. What's it. your idea? <laughs> I mean, I it's hard for me to explain. I knew a um. Years ago, and I, I said this like that was a long time ago. When I was working at a job, I had a, um, a co-worker whose daughter was like close to our, our age. And what was her name? I think she, she had started like a business and it was like enigmatic. I, I, I forgot. It, it went with like the whole like enigma thing. And that's when I kind of got um, introduced to like what like enigma kind of stands for and what it is, which even now... I'm familiar with, but not, but I know it has like a, I can't explain it. Like definitely has a, a mysterious, like, yeah, like you, you're trying to figure out more about her. So I was wondering, like, I know reading, um, the character description and stuff. I mean, you know, it's just like, she's okay. What is this? Moving on, uh, moving on from a life of serving the scum 
Edith and then with the major player. So I'm like, she's she must be mysterious, but I don't know what like, you know, if it has to do with like Edith and like what she went through with Edith that makes her mysterious or if like just her in general or like things before she met Edith and had to work for her make her like that do we ever find out anything more than what she or she's just going to be a mystery the whole time but I knew the name I was like she named her it stood out to you exactly and I'm, I'm glad you keep referencing the character profiles uh, because it is on the kickstarter so I'm very Oh, okay. Keep referencing ooh, the Kickstarter, ooh, okay. definitely. <laughs> More support, the better. So um, every single character, every single character, their name means something. So Audrey means something, Arlick, Glenn, all of it. I okay. put that to that individual specifically. So for Enigma, yes, I did choose it for a reason. For her, aside from the fact that I love that word, and I feel like it describes me sometimes being out of the box and strange and different and mysterious, for her... The reason she is the enigma in this series is because everything that she does is just strange. But that strangeness okay. is what moves things along and moves things forward and helps um, slap other characters in the face of, wow, wait a minute, oh, okay. So enigma, okay. her presence in that name is sort of her way of putting um, a mirror to each character. And, and her okay. actions are enigmatic. Okay, okay. Mm, that's exciting okay because i was i was like that name she looks pretty mysterious like like what is she up to like something okay i'm glad you said that okay Ooh. okay i'm, I'm not gonna uh, mikey you got anything else I'm, yeah I, so I, I actually want to circle <laughs> right back to audrey real real quick so um so there's two things and I'm, I'm, I'm probably off but i want you to tell me i'm off but um so let me ask you this first okay. zoe Zoe, do you watch um, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure at all? No, I haven't yet, actually. Okay, so that, that, that takes that thing out of here. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, cool. I'm that's, crying. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I, I just wanted to make sure. So, so uh, Valencia and Audrey. So this is, my, this is my second theory, and this is the one that makes more sense. So I know that <laughs> Valencia is um, basically her true self. So would you kind of say – so I, I watch a lot of superhero stuff. So, um, like, for example, Superman – is the main person but clark kent is kind of like really the costume when you really think about it like his true self is superman but he has to wear clark kent to to kind of be in society and everything so when i'm looking at audrey and valencia i know you said that valencia is more so the true essence of who she is and maybe audrey might be the more the costume of the two counterparts basically does that kind of make sense what i'm saying it does it does and i'm very happy that you uh, even addressed that question so on edith uh by the way i just want to make sure that it's clarified edith is the name of the planet so it's not earth it's okay. definitely it's, the name of the planet is edith which also nay has a meaning behind the name uh, but so on on edith uh, there are tier profiles and audrey's tier profile which is based on occupation. She is a servant. Um, as a servant or as a person who's out in society, you have to put on a facade. You have to control yourself. And for Audrey, especially because of all the trauma that she's been through, which will be presented in the story, she has shut down everything else that does not fit and what she has to do. Right. So that is her facade. That's her, her mask. Um, once she encounters her true self, which is Valencia, that mask, gets chipped away and it begins to just not matter anymore. So it's not necessarily, this is my facade. I'm going to put it on for you. No, it gets to the point to where I'm not even going to attempt to put on a facade anymore. So it's not necessarily a mask switch. It's going to be her character growth. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That does it. make a lot of sense. <laughs> It's just, oh my goodness. I love oh. Arlick's uh, artwork, by the way. Thank yeah. you. Isn't he so cute? <laughs> so, it's a, I, I don't, I really don't want to reveal everything, but like, is the little one, the big one, is the same Arlick? Yeah. Okay. Look now, <laughs> you got to be careful with your eyes. I know. Now, if you do go on the Kickstarter, you'll be able to see the image of little Arlick. And is it big Arlick or is it a different one? I don't know. Okay. You have to read the series to find out. 
but they do look a lot alike, don't they? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. They look like my so dogs. Cute. So cute. I was trying to, okay. All right. So cute. All right. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And, and, I, and I'm also um, uh, a fool for like, you know, I, I love fire stuff too. So just the, the fiery edges, perfect. Mwah. Well, he is a elemental. He oh. is a fire terrier. Um, I will go ahead and give you a little tidbit about terriers. Terriers, don't think of an actual dog that's a terrier pup. It's not what Arlick is. So terriers in um, the primary deviance world are uh, midnight magic creatures. So midnight magic is a forest that encompasses most of Eden. And Arlick and uh, his uh, species lives in there in the darkness, right? And there are different packs of terriers, and he is a part of the fire attack pack. So Arlick himself is the only one, aside from his mom, who can control the element of fire. Mm -hmm. So he, in a sense, you could think of it as royal blood. He is an elemental. So he is the next one in line to be leader of the pack. That's why he has that fiery edge in the eyes. Um, and you won't see that in the other terriers. And you'll be able to explore his world and his race and, and all that a lot more throughout the series. And it's very intricate and exciting and wonderful to uh, explore. So I'm very excited for that, too. But, yeah, I'm glad you like it. Um, and he is fire elements. And he, for as an elemental, um, the way I'm using that word is he can control it. He basically embodies that element. Mm. Mm -hmm. So did you grow up um, on the same, how do I put this? Did you grow up like watching the Saturday morning cartoons, animes, and, 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 and then is that where you got your start when you started viewing, you know, this genre of cartoons, I guess? Well, that's a complicated question, but the simple answer is yes, I did grow up watching Yu-Gi-Oh! and Dragon Ball Z and all that on Saturday mornings when I wanted to wake up early for some reason. Absolutely, I did grow up on that, and that is a huge part of what made me me. And then it got to the point to where I would look at it and I would say, dang, I wish that I could live that life. But that's, that's Japanese thing that that's what they do i could never see myself in that but dang i want to be i want to be a ninja i want to be a pirate i want to do this i want to do that but i can't why don't they look like me mm. and it got to the point of uh me just wishing that i could see myself in that realm and magical and wonderful and it inspired me to be strong and care about friendship and uh, it gave me some wisdom but it wasn't someone like me giving me that wisdom and that strength. So from watching the Saturday morning cartoons, I grew into my passion of wanting to see someone like me represented in that world. And that's how Primary Deviance came. That's what I'm talking about. I'm trying to tell you, that is such a beautiful thing. Ooh, just gives me chills. <laughs> Straight out of Orange, Texas. I hear you, girl. Yes, represent Orange, Texas. Tiny, tiny little place. <laughs> oh, this is random. It, because now people are like, oh, why are you asking? Do you know how far is Orange from Woodville? If you've even heard of Woodville, Woodville, oh my gosh, I have no idea. Okay, well, let me ask you this: How far is Woodville from Louisiana? Um, Woodville, maybe two hours, because Woodville is about an hour outside of Beaumont. Oh, then Orange you, is extremely close. I'm saying you're about blinking. 30, 45 minutes from Orange. I'm wondering if it's right there. Woodville, if you blink, you're, you will be through it and not even know you drove. Are you in Woodville right now? No, I'm in Dallas, but I had a teammate in college that was from Woodville. So I would go down there and. You probably cross paths yeah. with, with Little Orange. So, yeah. Yeah, we're about 40, 40 minutes from Beaumont. Yeah, I, I pulled it up on Google <laughs> Maps. I cheated. Um, I'm weak. <laughs> Yeah, so it appears that uh, Woodville is north of Beaumont, so it mm -hmm. would be northwest of Orange. Okay. Oh, very accurate. Wood, I would say Woodville is literally like this. I think they have a neighborhood Walmart and a Dairy Queen and a Jack in the Box. That's uh, I mean, that was, that's, my uh, thing that I did with my crew was go to the theater, which only played two movies at a time. And they shut it down, and I loved it. Like, we only had a theater. That's all we had, two movies at a time. So yeah, I understand that. But the good thing, a 
again, it brings it back to my story. Everything that I am goes into primary deviance. So the good thing about growing up in Orange is the sense of community that I had. Oh my gosh, I'm so thankful to have had that. And I put that into my story. So Enigma, for example, where she comes from and what you will learn about her past, it, there's a huge sense of community because she starts off as a servant as well. Um, and it's a lower tier profile. And in her community, if you're hungry and, and the neighbor next door is barbecue and then it becomes a, a block party, you know, it's that kind of sense of community that uh, my characters experience. So I put that past into my series, but I also put what I've experienced outside of Orange into my series too. So one of my characters has a really big fancy house, for example, with a pool in the backyard. And, and Enigma, for example, might go to that place and be, what, what's going on? This is so nice. I've never experienced it. Can I touch this? Can I touch that? But even something like that has a sense of community. It's just mm -hmm. in a different way. So I try to put everything that I experience into that. So I'm very thankful for Orange. <laughs> Shout out to Orange. Shout out to Orange. It's gonna be random because the I watched my six hundred pound life and I really think it was a lady that was from Orange on there. I'm serious. I'm serious because I was like, I didn't know there was an Orange Texas at this time. Because I mean, Texas is so big, so vast. Yeah. Like you, and there's so many small, you know, towns. Nothing wrong with it, but like you know, you start venturing out, you start realizing, yeah. oh my gosh, there's so many places in Texas and since I watched my 600 pound life, anything that has Texas in it, of course, is going to stand out like a sore thumb because I'm like, oh, where are they at? Exactly. She, she ended up, she worked, <laughs> I mean, it worked for her. Yeah, I was know. talking to Zoe before we started recording. I told her, I was like, we had dro I drove to New Orleans like two years ago and I'm like, I'm pretty sure we drove you either through Orange. or near Orange and she's I'm like, pretty yeah. Certain. <laughs> pretty certain. <laughs> that is so crazy. I'm driving to New Orleans would be oof. <laughs> so growing up, were you like, were you, were, did you have like friends that were also into anime and and into um J Japanese animation, and everything like that? Growing up, the, uh, that's actually another good question. So, all right, so growing up uh, in high school and in middle school and stuff for a while, early early in my childhood, I was shy about the fact that I liked anime. Um, let's work. Uh, and then come later on in middle school and then in high school, I stopped caring <laughs> and I was just being me. And I grew up because we were so, such a small community. I grew up with the people that I went to high school with and they knew me and they respected me. Um, but there were still other people, uh, around me who were into anime in a bigger, more loud way than I was. And they were picked on. Right. Mm -hmm. So in a situation like that, I not only learned from it, but I grew from it. I made friends with those individuals. I did my best to, uh, by being their friend and sitting with them and eating with them and hanging with them, I protected them to the best of my ability. And they taught me certain lessons of uh, what they learned uh, from anime and their pains and everything. So everything that I learned in that realm of dealing with people who dissed, people who liked anime and dealing with people who loved anime, um, I implement that into my story as well. Every challenge that my characters face, um, I have faced. Um, every challenge is that my, uh, the antagonist may face, I have seen, right? So uh, growing up and experiencing people who both not, didn't like anime and picked on people who liked anime, as well as growing up with people who were those likers of anime, um, that experience helped me a lot with the Primary Deviant series. Uh. I love, I love. So I, I do have a question, because I don't want to get too much away. But the, um, the video that was attached to your media kit will be people who um, purchase the Kickstarter and uh, donate to the Kickstarter, will they be able to see that, that 15 minute interview? Okay, awesome, because I was gonna say that was so, it was really nice to just see like everyone that's like that's in top D, just what they think about you, how highly they think of you, just kind of seeing you like oh, in your element. Yes, that first of all, they are lit, but like just seeing you in your element and just like hearing the different perspective and just like it, it was just really nice to 
see that. So I, I'm I'm glad to know that that'll be part of the Kickstarter because I Thank I really you. enjoyed watching it. I was like, oh, they're so nice. Like, I could. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, yes, it is on the Kickstarter, and it is a big, uh, big part of. It explained a big part of why we do what we do, and all of those individuals, except for one, uh, were family. So everyone of Top D, they're family. Um, I am going to toot my own horn and say that I have very talented and educated and and skilled people in my family that I am so blessed to have on my team. I don't have to pay them yet, (laughs) but I am so blessed to have them because with, like I said at the beginning, without them, I wouldn't be sitting here with you today. So every individual that you saw on there, um, are very hardworking. We've worked for many years and I'm glad that you, uh, that 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 was communicated to you because it's very important they yeah they're awesome like you can tell and they believe in you and i mean they they were awesome even especially your mom she's like i'm not saying this because she's my daughter but i'm just saying like she really is yeah i'm like yes mom yes like i'm with you it was just it was really she seems so sweet everybody seems so sweet and the like when you have people that back your ideas they believe in you like it helps you just move so much further because it's like i know that people believe in me i believe in myself and to know that other people believe in me like that just that's even more helpful to like for me to keep going so absolutely and you know they um right next to that right next to that belief that they have in me they are honest with me they are very honest with me. They were the first ones to read the series, um, the beginning of the series. And if something just didn't flow right, or if I'm not behaving right, or if I just, I'm not seeing something clearly, they call me out on it. They teach me, they help me grow. Um, so it, it's it's also that constructive criticism that they give me, as well as that support. And, and they balance it so well. So it, it's both of them. <laughs> it's just, it's good to have that. Cause you can't, some you know, you can't have that with everybody, but to know, like, you know, when you have your family there, like, you know, family is going to be wrong, uncut, but love on you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They're going to give you the constructive criticism, you, criticism, but love on you after, yeah. you know, not like how some people that aren't necessarily, you know. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> so, I, I mean, it was, be- I loved like that. That was like, oh, I was like, this is so sweet just to see everybody like just say like we believe in this like we believe in what she has going yep we're like 10 toes down we're behind it you guys should be too and i was like yeah i am i sure am mm-hmm. thank Where's you the kickstarter <laughs> <laughs> i guess it was oh that i'm glad that's gonna be on there zoe when did you um and it doesn't necessarily have to be primary deviance when did you start writing period you know, to be honest, it was primary deviant. So I started around when I was nine years old. As we just discussed, I uh, grew up watching Saturday morning cartoons, right? And it began. It got to the point to where I wish I could see myself in that realm. And I had all these daydreams and, and whatnot to help me fall asleep. I would come up with these adventures that I would go on. And I didn't want to lose them because they meant so much to me. They got me through a lot. So I started writing them down. And then my mom... <laughs> started bugging me. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you writing? And eventually I shared it with her after I organized my thoughts and she looked at me and said, so you should, you should write this and turn this into a book. And from there we gathered the team and we grew and we grew. And I wrote so far, I've got five books. Um, so far the, the series is going to be long. You know how anime series can be long. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be long. Um, and we're working on publishing the first book with the Kickstarter support. So any support that we get, um, and we, we got to reach this goal. Once we do, we're going to publish the first book, take it to investors. And with the support of the investors, we're going to mass produce it and then create the graphic. And then our next goal will be the animated series. So that's why the Kickstarter is, paramount <laughs> we, we definitely need some support absolutely absolutely, oh, absolutely. We'll do everything we can to get that support we're gonna push we are going to push oh you know Zoe, i have one other question i was thinking about it and it kept slipping my mind are there any novels or books that um influenced you with your um with this with this project okay i would yes and oh my gosh immensely 
So half of what influenced me was uh, anime. The other half is this series. When I was in elementary, I don't know what grade, I was going through the library looking for a book, and I picked up one that says something about knights. And it was the first book, truly, I have ever picked up that was the main character was a female and she was strong. She disguised herself as her brother to become a knight. She was the first one ever to do it. And I was like, wait a minute, I could be the main character in a story? <laughs> a girl, really, me? And I don't have to be in a romance or anything? It was truly the first book I'd ever read and it impacted me so much that I was able to create Audrey. And, and she was finally my, I was, at first Audrey was a guy. <laughs> when I was around mm. nine, ten years old, Audrey was a guy, and that book inspired me and, and helped me realize main character p could be a girl and she could be strong. Wow, Audrey was a dude. <laughs> Name Adrian. No I'm kidding. <laughs> Maybe this is before she had a name, but yeah. <laughs> Valencia was Valentino. <laughs> okay. Bye. That's not your name. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. They're making color blue, not purple. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a thing. <laughs> and, and see, that is, you, when you think, when you say things like that, it kind of takes me back as a woman, like thinking, like, wow, I, I didn't see a lot of strong women characters or, you know, outside of like a romance. Like, it wasn't there. I'm not crazy. The only female character I saw growing up was probably Sailor Moon. Yeah. And and honestly, so Sailor Moon, I think, is meant to have that strength about her. However, you know, Audrey uh is more of a tomboyish type of strength. She's 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 kinda like she's me. <laughs> you know. Uh she, she's more hardcore and when she fights you can see all of the cuts and the dirt and all that stuff you know so even in the anime uh once we create that you, you'll be able to see people don't look pretty when they fight <laughs> no kind of like cora <laughs> all right yeah i could i could see that she they did really well with showing her after fight uh fighting she would have her cuts and her scars and they showed her trauma oh well, yeah that was a good comparison yeah. <laughs> like, I'm weak. <laughs> I'm job. glad they kept that. They ain't gonna see that for another week or two. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I joke. No, no, I joke. Real talk, I'm I behind. kid. I kid. I'm super behind. <laughs> Listen, I'm I'm gonna be looking for this. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to see this. So you gotta, even if you gotta, you know, put us ahead of the schedule. <laughs> Mix it. Mikey, you got it, Mikey. No, Mikey. I'm going to pull an all-nighter, man, because between Michaela, these dogs, Jen, uh, they just sap, they sapping my strength. I'm so mad you put Jen's name at the end. Oh, 100% <laughs> Jen, yes. Um, but anyway, Jen is my boo and uh, my daughter's mother, and they take all my time and money, so. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, um... So, so where do you see primary? I, well, actually, I, I know where you want. Where do you see primary deviance this time next year? So the the Kickstarter is coming up for November the twenty second, right? Yes. Okay, cool. So, where do you think November next year? Where do you see primary deviance being in the stage? Uh, ideally, because you know, of course, you don't know what's going to happen. But where do you see? What do you? What would you like to be? Primary Deviance this time next year is going to be published. It's going to be published. The first step will be the written word. Um, and then the next step is going to be the graphic. But right after the Kickstarter, uh, which, you know, when we meet our goal, of course, when we'll you be will. investors. And then that's going to be a journey in itself. Um, mm -hmm. But once the Kickstarter ends, the next step will be uh, to publish and then getting to the investors. And then after that, we're just going to get the ball rolling. It's going to take off. Yeah. It's going to take all the way off. And the Kickstarter is currently up. Uh, so by November 22nd, that's when we got to reach the goal. Um, so hopefully, definitely, like by January 1st, that's going to be the next year. Right. <laughs> so start getting the ball rolling. So then, uh, by November 22nd, that's when it closes. 
you know, anyone just go in, check it out, and support. We got you. I just want to shout out uh, Mari real quick because um, he he's very he, he's very persistent. He was like, look, he was like, hey, we got this Kickstarter coming up on the twenty second November. You know, if you can get us in before then, you know, that'd be super super dope. And I was like, you know what, we got to make sure we get them on before because uh, we, we me and they actually have a lot of people lined up that we wanted to talk to. And I was like, yeah, we gotta we gotta get them in since she has this Kickstarter coming up and everything. So shout out to God, give him his credit. We he put the All pressure, right, absolutely. He put the pressure on us and he was like, hey, we we need you to get this done and, and fit us in the schedule. I was like, all right, I got you, I got you. So. Like I said, my team is hardworking. They were extremely hardworking. We've been working for years. So thank you. Yes, yeah, shout out to Maury. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I was going to say, I know when me and Mike, when we seen everything, like I was completely so because I, I really want to say as long as we've been doing this and I uh, charge it to my head and I'm a heart if I'm wrong, you are our first woman content creator, like as far like with creating like having a novel you know anime series everything so when i seen the media kit i was like mike when we i was like okay yeah so what day we put her in, on because like <laughs> like that's up, like, thank you <laughs> look i was like we don't uh, we haven't you. had any women not saying that they're not out there y'all just because uh. you know people seem like miss close up not saying that they're not out there we haven't been exposed to them yet so when we got wind of you i'm like yeah definitely like and mike was like yeah we're gonna get her on well here. then even more so much appreciated it's an even bigger honor to be here so thank you and because i know that i know for a fact i have met women who are amazing creators so i'm very honored to uh be seen as one you definitely are and what you have written what you have going your team it's just, it's really it's really good to see, and so you have Blanime support one thousand percent. Like Thanks seriously, so much. for sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, shoot, I'm trying to think. So, Zoe, was there anything that 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 we haven't discussed that you wanted to uh, you know put out there for the people to know um, about Primary Deviants? Yeah. Okay. So I can, there's two things that I would like to inform. Um, and part of it's a little insight. The overall idea of, uh, sorry, the overall storyline for primary deviance is following Audrey on her adventures. So she breaks the law of birth and blood by running away from her life of servitude. And while on the run from the governments who rule in the public and the ulterior luminary who rule from the shadows, she affects change in the fictional society of Edith by befriending enemies and mastering skills that are forbidden to someone from her tier profile. Mm. Um, what I want to put out in that is take note of those key words that you don't know and look forward to finding out more about that because they are each individually multi-level. There's so many different secrets in primary deviance I'm excited to share. And then aside from that, no matter what genre you're interested in, Primary Deviant is speculative fiction, so it's laced with different elements from many different genres. It's got horror, it's got trauma, it's got action, fantasy, sci-fi, adventure, a little bit of romance. No matter what genre you're more inclined to, this series will be for you. And for you, for example, Nay, um, if you want to read the novel, you will have that opportunity. If you wish it was a graphic, you will have that opportunity. If you want to watch the anime, you will have that opportunity because it's a triple threat. And that's not something I've ever seen done, um, ever. And then the fact that the main characters are people of color and the two primary characters are women, it's even more exciting. And I cannot wait to share it with everyone. This is something that the world needs today. Um, what my series represents is what the world needs today. Um, so look forward to it, support it, and we will reach our goal. Um, the social media that we have already up for Primary Deviance, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, well, uh, well. and of course the Kickstarter. In every outlet that we have on media, there's a link to that Kickstarter. And all you got to do, for example, is go to Instagram, type in Primary Deviance, we are the only one. You will see us, you will get some updates, you'll see some of the characters and information, but most important on that social media is the link to the Kickstarter. 
and you go straight to the Kickstarter, see our video, uh, and support us, especially if you believe in it. Oh. Definitely do. Look, I'm over here fine. Look, I'm like, <laughs> right on. Thank you. I didn't Absolutely. You're following us on Twitter and everything. I didn't even see this one. No, I don't know. Because I like you guys. <laughs> you know, I'm fine. Don't, don't, don't do that. Yeah. We're, 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 I do. Don't. Do that. <laughs> don't, don't. I'm definitely going to be staring, sharing different things. <laughs> Zoe, we always ask our. Um, our guest is so Mike. You already knew top five anime. We no, have no. to have. Oh my god! You I mean know we today? probably put you on the spot, but we <laughs> have top to five, know. Top five today because <laughs> it changes. It changes. Uh, look, it like changes. It does. It's so, hard today. As okay. of the sixteenth of October. Yes. <laughs> let's, see, let's, see, let's see if I could do this. Okay. Oh, does it have to be in order? No, it doesn't have to be in order. Okay. No. All right. So I'll just go with the ones that inspire me. Right. All right. Nay. One piece. <laughs> mm. I'm not. I, I'm. I'm not mad. Uh, Oda is a be I know he's a really great writer, so I'm not mad at that. I just you Usopp just oh, one piece. I hate Usopp too. Naruto. Okay. Right? Naruto. Um, fruits basket. Got to put that one in there. Let's see. And oh, I've always had trouble pronouncing this, but Kadocha. The Kodomo no Amoka, that one. Uh, it's about a little girl who is an actress and she's always positive, always upbeat. She is hit hard with so many things that are traumatizing, but she never stops singing. She's always going and it's good. It's one of those 80s style type of anime. Mm. And that inspires me personally as well as for my art. Um, and then the fifth one would be... Ooh, <laughs> that one's hard. <laughs> I'm gonna just throw in Psychopaths. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys, if either of you have checked that one out, but it's a very serious, dark, psych type of anime. And the reason that one inspired me was because it's got a serious, re realistic tone to it. And that's something uh, that I put into my series as well, because what my characters hit, um, we face today. So someone in a low tier profile face uh, prejudice, we face that today. Someone um, who looks like one of my characters faces prejudice, and we face that today. So that kind of realistic undertone really inspired me, and I try and put that into my series. Uh -huh. I'm not mad at that. So I noticed two, two out of the big three were on there, but the, the best of the big three wasn't on there. So. Oh, Lord, he bleeps. Oh, oh, man, man. <laughs> 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 you know, it's seven deadly sins. You said what? At least I didn't say seven deadly sins. I, I would have judged you, but I appreciate you. <laughs> you know, exactly. It would, have been a, like, it would have been seven deadly sins for it to be on your top five. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye, Mike. The animation is terrible. <sighs> I haven't touched it in so long. Speaking of animation. So, uh, stop, Donnie. I'm not snapping for you. Um, Zoe, if you had to get, if you got your choice out of any animation studio to pick up Primary Deviance, what would, which one would you pick? Oh my god! You know, if I if I could, you know, in an ideal world, I'll have my own animation That's studio because, first of all, Black Lives Matter, and, and there are so many creative Black individuals out there who are unseen or have not been hurt, so they would definitely be in there. I'm gonna, that's actually my answer. I'm going to have to choose. Kudos to them. And especially if you can count Studio Ghibli, come on. Come on. Oh, Ghibli is. Come on. But I will go ahead and say I'll make my own. Did you actually know that there is? I have a meeting team behind me. And the primary, the top D corporation, you know, that that's, that's what I see. <laughs> and that's what's coming. Oh, Mike, you were about to say. Oh, I was just going to say, did you know that there is a a, a black-owned uh, animation studio in Japan right now? I did. Okay. But yours is going to be bigger than that one, so. Well, it's not going to be in Japan. This is going to be here. <laughs> <For> one thing. <laughs> it's going to be right here. And who knows? Maybe we should collab in the future. You never know. I am so. I always do this whenever we have a a, a creator, so. Can can you commit right now to putting me and Nay in a filler episode? 
<laughs> we always, we always ask this. this for people that, that, that write stories. I, I need, okay, okay. I need Here to we be go. in the filler episode. Like, just, just have me. Just make a cameo. You're recording this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I commit. That's easy, y'all. That that for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you guys will, might not even be in just one, but maybe two. <laughs> I'm excited. Nay has known how many times I've asked this question, and I, I'm I waiting to see who the first person that's gonna actually do it, and just not gonna lie to me. So, so one of my top fives anime Naruto. What does he always say? He never believe goes back it. On his word. Oh. oh yeah, ninja. Yeah, that's the ninja. He never way. goes back on his word. I won't go back on that. Sure. That is his ninja way. I'm talking about. I believe it. Don't listen to me. You know. He's no, <laughs> And he also says his ninja way is he doesn't go back on his word. You got it. I got you, Mike. I got you, Nick. Yay. I'm so excited. So one of the last questions that I'll ask, or not even really, yeah, I guess it's a question. What would you tell someone in particular, uh, you know, maybe a younger black um, girl or woman that's listening um, that has like, dreams and aspirations of creating some type of content whether it is a book or a podcast youtube channel whatever it is um what would you give them for advice and it could be general for anybody but i know in particular like ones that look like us because you know sometimes we we need to hear from us hear it outside of ourselves Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely there are two things one is this is extremely hard this is extremely hard. It's it's a double-edged sword. It's your passion, but it's also your pain. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is okay. Don't ever feel like you are the only one who feels that way. Because I'm feeling it every single day. This is very hard to accomplish, but I'm not going to give up because I'm determined. So maintain that determination, no matter how scary or how painful it is. I am actively doing that in this very moment. Um, I hate being on camera, (laughs) but I'm facing it because I'm passionate and I am determined. And then the second thing is you don't have to be the most talented or the most beautiful or the smartest. Lord knows I am not the most talented or the most beautiful or the smartest. Hard work and passion can get you there too. Where's my, where are my? It's beautifully where, said. Where I know. Where's the hand clap? I'm, I'm blowing it. I'm blowing it. Here it is. <laughs> I'm blowing. <laughs> <laughs> beautifully said, and you are the gorgeous girl. So don't even say that. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you are. You are beautiful, girl. Thank you, because like that, those those type, like that type of advice, really is helpful for a lot of people that listen to us and i mean even for me and mike like i mean like i said it doesn't you know you can get inspiration you don't have to you know somebody can be younger than you older than you whatever to get like encouragement so thank you i actually asked it for myself guys i I threw y'all in the under the bus for it but just for me to be honest (laughs) um you asking me that question inspires me so i appreciate that and I hope you recognize that you have made my day, you and Mike. And I hope you recognize that you asking for my advice has given me strength. So I try. I try. <laughs> it's very encouraging. It's just, it's, be- it's nice to be an, around a Black woman content creator and just seeing their project, seeing it coming to, into fruition. Um, just we're excited to see everything that happens from this point on because we already know you guys are going to hit your goal by the 22nd of next month so you guys go check out the kickstarter go support y'all know how we are we're about to go support it um i'm ready to see i will read the novel because i want to know what happens so look mike is <laughs> mike, that, 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 he looked at, he said that like she never reads, no. which I don't. You, know you, but... do, you do though, because like anytime we have somebody that we that we talk to, like you know, oh, yeah, whether it be fiasco it. or whether it be uh, God Punch, they uh, like everybody will usually send us like a copy of something, but beforehand they will read it like like that. So she, 
She, I, I did with her. When she's invested, she reads it like like without a question. So yeah. So well, all right then. Now you can just get the triple threat through and through. You can get the written, the graphic, and the anime. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I would hope even you have the triple threat. Why don't we make it a quadruple threat threat? And maybe one day you could do a live action. Uh, did you say maybe or yes, we will do. <laughs> oh, you guys gonna do a live action? Oh, can I, mean, I be I'm an extra? Okay. Me and my can I be an extra? Yay! Please don't forget about the little people. I would definitely like to be an extra, even if I'm just walking by on Edith. I don't know, you know. It's all good. The little people do the footwork. The little people are the most important, in my opinion. They're the big people. You, you you're with me in this moment. So, come on, you're good. Mike, I'm be extra. <laughs> I'm dead. She. I'm trying to get this filler episode. You about to be an extra. How? how you, 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 <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> she already I'm in the so movie, casted and everything. I'm done. Yes, <laughs> that is exciting. Extras really do stand out, though. Just for the record, they do. I notice a lot of extras in different. Especially things. with with the silver silver braid. That just made know, me think. They, they special. <laughs> did you know? I'm sorry. This is totally off topic. Nay, did you know Jen was an extra in Girls Trip? Your girlfriend did? Yes. She was in New Orleans? Yes. Did she know they was recording? How did that happen? No, Why have legit, I never been like, around? She was legit hired for like, you know, for... To be oh, extra. she was hired? Well, you know, not hired, but you know, like they asked people to be extras for the, I think the club scene. What? when they Do were, they pay you when they ask you to yeah. do that though? It was like it was like it was like something do crazy like like a hundred dollars or something like oh, that. That's, that's an easy hundred dollars though. I know. <laughs> I'm not mad at that. But she's just yeah, she's, she's I, I I haven't seen. This Did she part. point herself out? Oh, okay. I, I, yeah, I, I, okay. She hasn't pointed out, but she told me like she's in there and like she was there when they were all recording and everything. I was like, so you a little movie star, huh? So that's something to tell Michaela. You can definitely stretch that story out. Yeah, see, I gotta be. Your mom was the. I fifth. can't let Jennifer one up me. I gotta be. I gotta <laughs> I hurry up and be on Primary Deviance now. So it's all right. It's cool. You you getting a lot. You getting the filler episode, maybe two. <laughs> and then look, I'm not mad at it. I take it how you know me and Mike take it how it comes. You like to, if you ever need an extra? I am a good whatever. You know. I got y'all. I got y'all. Oh yeah, just like make Donnie my dog over here, like Arlick, but make him like let's let's go. All right make now, him, make all him. right now. Now you're talking the main cast. That you know, but, but, a lot of creators go sideways. That's <laughs> <laughs> too much. <laughs> yeah, I want to be on point. <laughs> Gotta be accurate. <laughs> Donnie probably be over there. Donnie be the lay down. Where you laying down now? Make him like a lightning <laughs> element. Shit. <laughs> I'm trying to make my dog interesting, man. <laughs> no. Nah, yeah. Well, yeah, no. Nah, uh, uh, appreciate you for sharing all that with us, Zoe, and everything. Um, we're going to get to the little fun part here. So, we're going to ask them some questions. This is questions for all three of us. So, uh, let's see what. Oh, let's anime. see, let's see what the. Know. Yeah, I know, right? Let's see what the people want to know from us this week. I, I really didn't review them like that. So, if there's some dumb questions, I'm going to skip them. Oh. Uh, let me see. Let me go to our Patreon listeners first. So yeah, so King Hokage eighty seven said, um, and I meant to send this to you earlier, Nate, but I forgot. Uh, it's okay. He said, "What will be our bottom ten anime? Not our top ten, our bottom ten. <laughs> ten. So hypnosis, uh, hypnosis, Mike rap battle division. That's nigga, that's number one go worst anime I've ever seen in my life. Um." To the abandoned sacred beast, I there always throw that in That's there. On there. So, uh, uh, last hope was trash. Fairy tale somewhere on there. Seven seeds, season two though. Season two, is seven seeds is definitely like a. Honestly, and people hate this, but Attack on Titan, not because of how incredible. I know it's incredible. It just causes me so much pain. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> oh that's fair. That's fair. So that's I, fair. I that engage special. anime based on my emotion, and it moves me too much. It is on point, but it makes me cry. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, that hit that. That's that definitely tugs on your heartstrings. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that at all. Oh. Uh... Mm -hmm. Fairy Gone and GBI. I was I'm definitely going to say Fairy Gone. Uh, yeah, GBI. Fairy Gone has so much potential. GBI is definitely on there. Uh, I feel like I watched something so bad this year and I can't think of it outside of the hyp hypnosis. Mike really scarred me from last week. I ain't, ain't going to lie to y'all. Um, 
If you didn't know, Zoe, there's a, a there's a rap battle anime that came out last week, and it's terrible. <laughs> well, that's kind of a hard thing to animate. Wow. It's, this is what happens when you don't involve black people in things like rap. So, um, yeah, um, so, yeah. I mean, truth. <laughs> right. I'm not mad at that though. Oh, yeah, plunder. I'm putting plunder on there. Oh, you know what's crazy? I, um, one of my friends said that the the manga was good. Would you hear that a lot with certain things? Just, yeah, they don't always translate. Um, yeah, I think that's right. it. Okay. Yeah, it was like the Kaleido Star. I think it was called. Uh, it, it caught my attention because it was like an underdog type thing where she wanted to be famous and stuff. Um, but it, it fell off. It, it just it, it it lost me after probably episode five. Uh, the the graphics wasn't really that good, and the storyline kind of plummeted. It, it, it kind of got into that that uh, that norm, you know, when to it wasn't unique enough. Don't you hate when somebody had like when an anime has such potential? Like you see where they can go with it. Like, no, I know go, you can do. Th- it's like you, you can just, go this way and then you go that way. Yeah, you just like take this random left and it's like, what is what? What did you do? Like, why? Why? Like you had so much there. Uh, uh that was actually a good question. The bottom ten, I wouldn't say. I love how we all like contributed to this ten. This ten. ten. <laughs> I mean, it's ten. You got to think on it. Yeah, because I was gonna say it's not that many. Just like absolute. I mean, you could say bottom ten, but like for us, and I think Zoe probably feels the same way. It has to be pretty bad for for it to be considered like bottom tier. Like it, it has to be. Back. There was this one, I think it was, I can't, it was so long ago, and I kind of watched it from my memory. It's either Keto's uh, Journey or something like that. that. Sounds familiar. Like a main, I think it's a main girl who's riding on a talking motorcycle or something, and right. they had right. such depth. Like, I expected so much depth for it, but it, it, it just, it plummeted. <laughs> it, it had me in the first few minutes, and then it just like, what the heck, it went sideways. I think it's called Keto's Journey. It actually has an eighty-two percent mm. on um it, it, my mm, ending list. I was very disappointed. It's like it kept building me up for each episode, and then at the end of the episode, it just it took away the depth. That is so crazy. I actually I found it too. It's only a one season, thirteen episode. Yeah. Mm. You hate to see it. Oh, that's sad. Yep. All right. Well, yeah, that was a good one. Um, here's another one from our Patreon listeners. It's from Mag Mason. He said, who do you think is the funniest slash inter- interesting character and why? I have one ready in the tuck if uh, if y'all needed a little a few seconds to think on that. Oh, just in general, who we think is the most yeah, like the funniest guy? slash interesting, most, most interesting character in anime? Why y'all, y'all, like y'all, y'all, y'all ponder that over? Um, I'm going to roll with my boy Reagan from uh, Mob Psycho 100. Um, Reagan's one of the few characters. Like Even when I'm watching like comedy animes, I hardly ever laugh. Like I'll think it's funny, but I won't actually like laugh in real life. But Reagan actually made me laugh a few times in real life with uh, how he is. Um, he's a scammer, but he's like one of the best <laughs> teacher scammers there ever was. And, <laughs> His character, so Leek actually brought a point to it the other day on the timeline. But yeah, Reagan is one of the funniest characters I've ever encountered in anime uh, from Mob Psycho 100. So, gotta give my boy his flowers. Funniest. Um, I think I'm gonna go with Reborn. Reborn's funny. Reborn, like, cause Reborn is the name of the sh- the show, but Reborn is his yeah. sense, and he's a baby. Mm-hmm. But Reborn, will, like, pop up, like they were training, and Suna did something, and he caught. He was like stupid Suna, and he kicked him in the in the face, and he's just so like raw, like he just do little stuff, like oh, he goes by Pow Pow Roshi sometimes, cause you know Roshi means master. Oh, okay. Yes. I found that out this week. So he'll go by Pow Pow. So like Master Roshi's name is Master Master, but 
that's neither here nor there. <laughs> um, but like he'll he's just funny. Like that that little baby, that that is the funniest baby I've ever seen in my life. And he legitimately be saying stuff and I'm like, this is funny. Like I can't as soon as funny too. Like honestly, I think that show is one of the like few animes that like every episode they do something and I like like you said, I actually like laugh out loud and I'm like, this is actually really funny. There is this anime, and I'm so mad I can't remember the name. It's a very short one, and each episode is like two minutes long. And it's about, uh, like, this de demons have been unleashed on the world, and the demon killer uh, from back in the day had thousands of kids. They don't know which one is the main heir, so they send all of them out to be heroes. And then the main cast they're just they're ditzy and they're hilarious and they're, it's like they're interacting with the audience um and each episode is two minutes long i cannot remember the name of it but it's freaking hilarious because it's so stupid and because that. it's so short they gotta put so much into it and then they talk about the next episode how the first episode cut off what happened it's just very interactive i liked it a lot Oh, if you find, if you remember the name, please let me know. Oh, I definitely it's on Crunchyroll. I'll figure it out. <laughs> I need that. Oh yeah, Gretzko or Retzko is is somebody that's really funny for me too. I'm gonna combine. I'm gonna combine these next two questions. These next two questions are uh, definitely for me and Zoe. So yeah, Nay, I know. Oh. Yeah, the Nay. You oh, they one piece. Oh yeah, have fun. How <laughs> she know? <laughs> All right, so. Lord Vale 93 said, uh, Lord Vale, aka One Piece Defender, here. But my question <laughs> is, will y'all keep watching One Piece? So that's part one. And then somebody else named the Weather Main said, One Piece check in. So I just want to know where we at. So I, I, as of right now, Zoe, I, I just finished uh, Water 7 and Any's Lobby. So I'm like that part right after Any's Lobby where. Uh, mm -hmm. Shanks pulls up on Whitebeard on a ship, uh, and uh, yeah, so yeah, it was such a good episode. Okay, um, <laughs> so I'm at the part where uh, they're underwater already and they've met Neptune. Oh. Um, so yes, I will keep watching it because, like I said, it's one of those big anime from my childhood that has inspired Primary Deviance. Um, it's just it's a double edged sword for me because the more I watch what has inspired me, the more pain i feel that i have to get it out i have to put my story out mm -hmm. um, so it's gonna be slow but i'm definitely gonna watch it until the end yeah wow so what what episode number do you think you on right now just uh, just uh, roughly, roughly sick oh my gosh i don't know a season i don't know season six so that's probably like episode 600 and something maybe You're in the 600s? It, I'm way, way up there, way past where it shanks me, um, Whitebeard. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna have a whole One Piece pod next week, but yeah, that's mm -hmm. uh, you. You'll definitely have to listen to that one because you're gonna you you might hear me act ignorant, but just know I'm a good person. Um, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Let me see. Let me see. What else we got here? Uh, compression dot pants dot poppy said. If DBZ is the godfather of the big three, what, if anything, do you consider Yu Yu Hakusho to be the big three? Oh, come on. I'm oh, sorry. The, the, they, they, the, they the other. I mean, honestly, like, if. They the brother, the big brother. Yeah. You know, if 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 we have to do this big th three thing with, with Dragon Ball Z, then I would have to say. Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball Z, and Yu Yu Hakusho. If we have to do it that way, the big Nay. the big dogs of the nineties, I guess, is what they're trying to imply. Nay, I I mean, I agree with that. And he said, "What well, if anything you consider Yu Yu to be?" I just feel like they're like the big brother, like. Okay. Dog. Okay. Yeah, I'm a nineties yeah, throwdown here. Okay. Yeah, I, I love. So we are talking about the big, big three from like what we will watch. That's like obviously you've seen this when you. See, okay, come on. So the big three: DBZ, Yu-Gi-Oh, and Pokemon. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. 
So those are the big three I grew up on for sure. Yeah. And until like Toonami got Naruto and Samurai Deeper Kyo and all that stuff, the main things like Saturday mornings, Pokemon, Yu Gi Oh, and then yeah, uh, and DBZ, and well, then Saturday. So Zoe, when, when po Pokemon came out, what 94, 90, no, early? 90. It was like probably the mid nineties. The mid nineties, right? Okay, and Yu Gi Oh would have been like late nineties, early two thousands when it came out. I think that they're a little, little, little bit after this era. Only I do, I do respect them, especially some childhood favorites and everything. I think because Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball came out in the eighties. And yeah. Dragon Ball Z came out like I want to say like 89, 90, somewhere in there. Sailor okay. Moon for sure started in the eighties. And then I think Yu Yu was like ninety two, if I remember correctly. So then D B Z Sailor Moon Yu Gi Oh. Okay. Wait. Yu Gi Oh over Yu Yu. Have you seen Yu Yu Hacker Show? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. All right, just making sure. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Yu Yu Hacker Show? Oh, no. That's why I say Yu-Gi-Oh, DBZ, and Sailor Moon. <laughs> Listen. And I took that personally. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you gotta be honest. <laughs> when she's honest. When oh, she's honest. My chest. It hurts your heart. That's respect, though. Oh, my respect. Heart. This is just, you know, it's the top three for me. But much respect, no doubt. No doubt. I respect it. A little. <laughs> Mike man. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're good. I'm gonna let her make it. She, she got the she got the, the best picture in the background right now. So um Yes. Um all right, so we had, I think we got three more questions. One of these is kinda weird. They asked let's play Xenoverse 2. Anyway, um so yeah, I'll say this last one. For okay. All right, so this is the this is the one. Nay, you might enjoy this one. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce this uh this name, so I'm not even gonna pronounce their name. But uh, he Rock said, Pritchett. what girl characters would you want to see on an anime version of the Bad Girls Club? Ooh, <laughs> mm. look at Zoe's face. Mm. <laughs> oh mm -mm. my god. Oh, uh, ooh. Um, my reckless women characters that I would love to see scrap. I feel like Noelle could be because she's so bougie from Black Clover. Noelle could be on there for sure. Yo, uh, yo we you had to. Uh, ooh, let me go because I I got some ideas. I, I would put Eno on there for sure. Oh, for yeah, Eno, that's a good one. That's a good one. Sakura yeah. will get beat up. Yeah, uh, that uh, e Sakura. No. But, but y'all know who would dominate? Who who would dominate and be a fan favorite? Who? Valencia from Prime Radio. My fave. She gonna be my uh, anime queen. Big so, yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, I definitely. Okay, so Valencia's in that thing. Um, I'll put Retsuko because oh. Retsuko have a nervous breakdown. I <laughs> am dead. Mm. Yeah. I, I'm sure. I would definitely. Ooh, I Nami. Just, uh, sorry. Sorry, Nick, but Mike, oh. Nami. Nami, yeah, definitely. Nami. Yep, Nami. Definitely. Oh, from um, One Piece? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she do got a little attitude. Oh, yeah. Mikasa. She, she from wants, uh, Attack on Titan? Yeah, She'd be ready to fight. She, she ain't talking to too much. She ain't going to talk. It ain't going to be no talking. It's hands. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's straight no hands. It is straight hands. Mm. Oh, I was trying to... Oh, girl from Disney uh, and Wonderland. Keiko. Uh, Oh, oh, that girl. I wouldn't want to live in no house with her. She had to stay in there. <laughs> if I was in that house, I'd be like, nope. She, I, either she goes or I go because you look like you feel to kill us. I'm not doing, like, I can deal with a fight, but the blood coming out, you just yeah. chop. Mm -mm. I have nothing for that. She yeah. can't stay in the house with us. I'm done. <laughs> oh, shoot. I think, yeah, that's all I got off the top of my head for. <laughs> <laughs> Bad Girls Club is funny. Ooh, Rachel Dang. from Tower of God, bro. Cause she sneak cause she a snake. And you always gotta have a snake in the house. Yeah, she would be the one. <laughs> White, nasty smelling fat bitch. <laughs> you know I hate Rachel. You know I gotta play that one right she when, when she's mentioned. 
she is trifling. She'd be the perfect person because she's going to mess somebody over in the house. She's going to do something real shady and they're going to end up getting kicked out the house with her and she's going to be sitting right. in the back and she's going to be right. smiling. Like, mm hmm, I got you. <laughs> mm -hmm. and ain't nobody even going to know. Yeah. Shout out to all the prob problematic women characters. Y'all need y'all's uh, <laughs> flowers. <laughs> really? Mike? <laughs> I am crying. Um, Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, this one, this last one wasn't really a question, but this is actually from uh, where underscore you been. So, Ben wanted us to know. Uh, he said, When y'all reading Fiasco issue three, Ben is a, uh, another writer friend of ours that we've had on the show recently, and uh, he's issue he's uh, dropping his his comic, uh, Fiasco issue number three. Um, his trailer came out today, so shout out to Ben. Um, yes, Ben 10. Yeah, that's what. I gotta drop. I gotta put his trailer in the Facebook group. Don't let me forget that name. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah shout out to being another writer. Oh. Uh, I mean, is issue three out already? Am I well, missing something? I think the I think the the trailer drop. I don't, when is issue? Yeah, three? issue three ain't when it. So I'll read it when it comes out, and if it already yeah. came out, then I'll go check it out. I don't think it came out yet. We'll talk. I'll talk. To okay. You. Well, I'll yeah. Be in tomorrow. I need clarity. I almost said something crazy. I'm but glad. the date y'all just need to pay attention to on this podcast is November the 22nd. So that's the date y'all need to say. You have up to the 22nd. So start now, Pete. Anything helps. And then to share the social media to other people you think might be interested. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. All of yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm remind everybody what y'all social medias are for at the end, but uh, I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna put the 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 ads in the description of this podcast so they'll be able to access Primary Deviance very easily and everything. Um, let's go ahead. Let me see here. Oh yeah, I, I this is one anime news time. I just saw one interesting article this week, and I just thought it would be kind of interesting to talk about. So a pro athlete. And where is he at? Uh, where is this guy from? From Poland. Pro athlete from Poland. Ooh, I think he's like a soccer player or something like that. Legally changed his name to Goku. I'm not mad at that. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm kind of mad at that, actually, because out of all, all right. the names. Let me put he, on my reading. He voice. better be the coldest. He better be the coldest ever yeah, you, in anything. Video. You do got to be cold. Yeah. You can't just name yourself. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is what the article says. <clears throat> there are millions of Dragon Ball fans around the world, but some go harder for the series than others. There are full families who have dedicated themselves to Goku and Vegeta. Now, one mega fan is making headlines after changing their name to suit their favorite Saiyan. And it just so happens that this man is a pro footballer. One, uh... Joan Roman, a 27-year-old athlete on Poland's Medic Legnica, I don't know how to pronounce that, has officially changed their name to Goku. The footballer has previously played for Manchester City and Barcelona. He is now going by the name Goku as reported by Goal. So this man legit legally changed his name to Goku. Well, when you a fan, you a fan. So this is true. So if I change my I'm name good. to Use K, would y'all judge me? Yes. Okay. Like, is if you a fan, you a fan. <laughs> you represent. I stand by what I say. <laughs> Look, I I would judge Mike for Nate tonight if you <laughs> yeah, But I'm I'm not mad because I definitely want to name my kids after anime characters. So I mean, I'm not mad at it, but they got some cool names. They do, and they inspire things. So yeah. Yay! Okay, yeah. I'll do it. That's all that. Yeah. That's all the that's all the uh, anime news I have. I didn't really look. Yeah, I didn't really look for anything else. I was like, let me keep it short with this one. That that one I couldn't resist but to talk about Goku as a changing your name to Goku is wild, embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you better be cold. Like, it's not really embarrassing, but you better be cold. That'd be like me changing my name to Najita. Yeah, I better be the coldest anything if i'm going to be representing the sand race what? which i feel like i could do pretty well but <laughs> i would i mean that's that's a lot to live up to lebron could change his name to goku he definitely could 
and, and nobody would think twice about it. I know. There's no question. <laughs> No. Yeah, whatever his middle name is, he should change that to Goku. His name, middle name is like Rashad or something like that. Some ghetto. Well, it ain't Rashad, um, ghetto, but you, I didn't mean it like that, but you know, you got you know, get up, get up. <laughs> <laughs> but if J.R. Smith changed his name to Goku, I'd be looking um, stupid because I'm like, you wouldn't even, you didn't play this. He, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's certain. <laughs> that's, that's really it. <laughs> I'm weak. Yep, but um, I think that's pretty much it, man. Um, so Zoe, uh, jo- Zoe's Kickstarter, as we've mentioned, is going to end on November the twenty second. So by the time you're listening to this, it should be the twenty first of October. So that gives you a whole month to um go and click the link in this description, which is going to contain the link for the Kickstarter and. Uh, contribute to the cause. Um, Zoe is now officially backed by the Blanime Podcast, so um, make sure you know you go and support this young lady, and uh, so we can get this filler episode with me and Nay. Um, the faster y'all support, the faster you can see me and Nay on screen. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, Zoe, like I said, we're, we're going to put everything in, in the description on here so um, so people can get to it and access it easily. Um, and then we'll, we'll mention it again a few more times, so make sure everybody doesn't forget mm-hmm. and uh, on future episodes and go from there. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Do, is there anything, any final thoughts that we want to get off before we get out of here? Um, Zoe, thank you for doing this with us. So it's much. been awesome. You are a beautiful person inside and out. I've enjoyed it truly. I'm humbled that you guys even wanted to do this, like do this interview with us. Cause like me and Mike really just feel like we're just, I don't know. Man, man, <laughs> the everyday, man. I would say we're just like <laughs> everyday Joe. So like when people, you know, want to collab. It's it's always a humbling feeling, like, you know, to know people actually listen to us and want to interact with us. So it, I've enjoyed it. I'm waiting for the novel. So as soon as it drops, I'm in there. I'm ready. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and again, I appreciate being here. And again, I want to stress the fact that I'm regular too, but regular people move mountains. So, and that's what we're doing right now with supporting primary deviance. Cause with primary deviance, I want to affect change in the world. So thank you for having me. I appreciate this so much. And I look forward to October 21st to hear it <laughs> all over again. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And I'm, I'm, I promise you, I'm going to do my best to get this video out uh, soon. So. Thank you. Ideally, <laughs> ideally, I can get it out by Monday too, but we'll see. Well, I'll be in contact. I'll let you know. I'll, I'll be in contact. <laughs> you just said it. Monday. I'm looking for Monday. You I'll, said it. Oh man, it's she fun. put this pressure on it's me. Fun. Pressure, pressure, bust pipes. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pressure, pressure, bust pipes. Well, yeah, I'm gonna have to really. I ain't getting no sleep. That's fine. Um, <laughs> all right, man. Well, um. Once again, Zoe, thank you so much. We 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 appreciate you for coming on with this. Um and we appreciate y'all for reaching out to us and, and listening to us and supporting us as well on your end. So thank you. We're gonna do everything we can to support primary deviance and we look forward to seeing um Audrey and, and the rest of the characters on the screen, <laughs> on paper, on everything. Uh, and yeah, that's that's pretty much all we gotta get. Oh, oh, real quick, do we have anything that we wanna recommend for our listeners to watch going forward. Um, Vatican Miracle Examiner. Vatican Miracle Examiner. Okay. That's my uh, psychopaths. Really was deep. Really was deep. It had another season, and I haven't been able to get to it. Of course, my That's Kickstarter. Of course, of course, of <laughs> course. Um, I, I think. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put Akadama Drive. Um. If you haven't, oh, you seen, yeah. If you haven't checked out Akadama Drive, it's on Funimation, and it's some of the best animation I've seen. So, um, yeah. And of course, Jujutsu Kaisen. So, <laughs> right, well, on that note, y'all start. Y'all support that Kickstarter, oh. and um, 
we have four things that we want to live by, Zoe. So um, wash your hands, wash your ass, watch anime, and wear a mask. Those are the four rules that we that we I live love by. it. Do it again. <laughs> Do it again. This is this is oh one more time. Okay. All right, one more time for the people at home. Wash your hands, wash your ass, watch anime, and wear a mask. That's what we live by here at the Blanime Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note y'all have a good week and um support primary deviants and we'll be back on the flip side bye everybody